Configuring in experience starts with a template. There are two types of templates. The full screen is for web apps and scrolling page for web pages. There are many default templates you can choose from. You can also get started with other templates from online, my organization, etc. There are two types of widgets, basic and layout. The latter controls the arrangement of the former. The basic widgets carry on functions like map, list, and survey. Generally, a widget has three properties, content, style, and action. In the content, you connect widgets to data and choose options like turning on the search tool on the map. The style property allows you to adjust the width and height of the widget, as well as where you want it to be on the page. You can also fine tune its appearance with background, border, and box shadow. Animations are visual effects that occur when a widget appears or is in transition. For example, in the 2D and 3D face-off, an effect takes place when a 2D view moves to a 3D view. Action enables widgets to talk with each other. There are two types of actions, data action and message action. Data action like export to CSV provides options for end users to take on. Well, message action automatically applies. As the data action is straight up forward, we are going to focus on the message action. It involves three parts, trigger, target, and action. The trigger is a message from a source widget like extend changes from map one. The target is the responder to the trigger, which could be a widget or data. Experience Builder is data-driven, therefore data are shared at the app level, which we often refer as framework. The action is what the target does. In the table, the message extend change is triggered by map 1. If map 2 is the target, the action could be zoomed to the same area as map 1. If data is the target, the action could be filtering data records that may result in the list widget only showing features within the current map extent. Let's see a demo for a better idea. For our next experience, we'll start with a blank template. And in this experience, we're going to focus on having widgets communicate each other, communicate with each other, and customizing them with our data sources. So we'll start by going ahead and connecting to our data sources again. In this case, we'll start with the same web map and web scene that we had in our previous demo. Then we'll add in a map widget and customize its location and place on the page to better fit our application. We'll then go ahead and connect that map to both our web scene and web map. Then we'll go ahead and add in a additional widget. In this case, we'll go ahead and include the widget controller, which enables us to include multiple widgets in an easy to use compact location. And here we'll go ahead and actually add in a new widget, which is called the table widget. With our table widget, we'll go ahead and add in a new sheet and configure it to our places of interest location in Glacier National Park. Now with those first two widgets configured, we'll go ahead and add in our third widget, which will be a list widget. We'll adjust the list widget to fit our page. And the great thing about list widgets is they come already configured with a bunch of templates that can really jumpstart your creation of them. 
we'll go ahead and tell it to take up the entire height of the page and then connect it to that same underlying Nash Glacier National Parks location data source. Now, in this case, we're going to go ahead and create some dynamic text based off attributes within our data. Here, we'll take the location name and resize the box a bit. And we'll also connect it to a dynamic image, which is an attribute in our feature service. In this case, we'll use the photo attribute to go ahead and have it dynamically populate the location. Now, we'll also use the content style and action panes to add a bit more configuration to the widget. Here, for states, we'll go ahead and customize the color of the border that'll be around the widget and increase its boldness when it's selected. We'll also go ahead and add in a tool, in this case, a sort tool, and we'll let people sort off of whether there's a photo or not. And we'll go ahead and just label that photo. Additionally, we could use the style, which, the style pane to ensure that it's fit, it fits and feels right within our application using some very easy to use tools um, to configure the location of the widget within the application. Now, finally, once that's set, we're going to go ahead and configure some actions using the action pane. So we'll begin by targeting two separate types of sources. Within Experience Builder, you can either target widgets on an individual basis or target the framework, meaning the underlying data source within the entire application. We'll start by targeting the map and having the list widget pan and flash to the Glacier National Park's points of interest whenever one's selected on the map. Additionally, we'll also target the entire Glacier National Park data source across all three of our widgets, the table, map, and list widget, and filter the data records based off the selected feature, meaning the expected behavior we should see when a, when a filter or when a feature is selected is that the list will filter the map will filter and the table widget will filter because we're targeting the underlying data source and not just an individual record or widget. So once that's done, we'll actually go ahead and save our application. And before previewing it, we'll adjust the theme to something a bit darker just to kind of fit with the feel of our application. Now, when we preview our application, we can see that when we select Lake McDonald Lodge, it'll go ahead and filter its location on the list, on the map. And if we open our table up, we'll notice it's also the only selected feature within our table. Additionally, if we unselect it and select the headquarters building, you'll notice our map pans and flashes to the location of the headquarters building on the map because we're targeting, we targeted that specific widget. Beyond that, each individual attribute has both its text and feature dynamically populated. And every time we'll click on it, the map widget will be targeted for those two specific actions. And the underlying data framework will be targeted filtering all three widgets in our experience. That's great. The layout widgets are containers to organize basic widgets. You can mix them together. I'd like to highlight the section widget. It is a container with multiple views, a great way to organize your content. Kane will demonstrate it shortly. For details on other layout widgets, please visit Designing Apps with Style and Layout technical session. Back to Kane. Now we're going to focus on how you can set up the same pages to easily navigate between different views and widgets. In this case, we're going to continue to work with the same application that we're using in our previous example and add some additional functionality to it. We'll start by adjusting the layout of our existing widgets, both the map and list widget in this case. Now, here, we're going to go ahead and add in a new type of widget, which is a section widget. And we'll go ahead and add in our map to the section widget. 
and use the table of contents to go ahead and connect the section widget, resize it a bit, and add both of our widgets inside of it. Then we'll just quickly go ahead and continue to use the flexibility of Experience Builder to customize it a bit further, re-expand our map, and move our table over a bit more, and adjust them slightly. So now that we have one section, we're going to go ahead and add in an additional view. Views are a great way to add in different widgets and applications all within the same page without kind of overwhelming the user all at once by displaying them all within the same interface. Within a section, you can have multiple views. And in this case, we'll add in a view one that we'll go ahead and call explore. And you know, view one will really be focused on what we did create our NOS application where you can explore different locations across Glacier National Park. Now view two, will be called feedback. And in view two, we're gonna focus on using some new functionality in Experience Builder, uh, focused on integration with between Survey123 and the map widget to allow users to give feedback to different locations they've explored across Glacier National Park. So within this section, we're gonna go ahead and add in a survey widget and size it to fit. We'll select an existing survey and then customize its look and feel to match the rest of our application. And then we'll also add in a map. Resize it and connect it to our Glacier National Parks map. Now in this case, since we have that existing survey, we're going to go ahead and connect the survey to the map. And we'll choose the map widget we just added and our National Parks place of interest. And we'll just quickly match the fields in the feature service to the survey questions so that we can auto populate them when we select a feature. And this even includes the geometry. So we'll match the point location to the location on the map and save our application. Now, finally, to enable us to easily navigate back and forth between the two views, we'll include a view navigation widget and we'll use our tools to snap it to the horizontal center of our application, uh, and we'll customize its look a bit more just to add a little more detail and context to it. Now, finally, we'll go ahead and go back to the outline, select our section, and we'll use the style pane to add in a transition animation. In this case, we'll use the cube animation, although there's a, a bunch of other ones we can use, and we can even change the direction in which they rotate. All right, so we'll save our application and go ahead and preview it. Now, when our application loads, we have this great place where we can come and explore locations across Glacier National Park, just as we did in the previous demonstration. Then, once we've explored places and we want to give feedback on them, we can go and select a specific location. So for example, we'll select this shuttle stop along uh, Lake McDonald. And you'll notice it auto populates the information in the survey since we've connected the two, add some feedback. It even maps the location on the map and submit the survey. And we can do this all because we're just using these dynamic sections to navigate back and forth in our experience.